What, what, what has a quote that go? Dr. Seuss is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But maybe. I think, I think that's a quote. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. Her name was Veronica. Veronica, and this here is Frank, and we're all feeling pretty good on this beautiful day. It's beautiful Friday, October 14th. It doesn't get much better than this. Do you know who I was being? Uh, bon Jovi? No, Elvis Costello. Elvis Presley. Costello. Costello. Um, today is National Veronica Day. Um, every day that I think they've, they've divvied out names. Let's celebrate. I think it's also Ryan Day. Shout out, Ryan. That's odd. You gave me um, Carson a few, few podcasts ago. I think it's new. It's, it's brand new. I, Come on, stop it. No, like, but people would say National Spaghetti Day is new. But I'm saying I think the names that like they've, they always want to add something more. Well, well, whoever figured out how you can add, now they're just going to start adding. Yeah. So, well, the thing I was going to say is just like when you walk into a, um, a down the shore little store when you're poor, uh, <laughs> And you will never be able to find your name if you have yeah. an obscure name. Is this not the same? So I thought with your name being Verona, this is sort of like you can sort of like tag on like the Ver- Veronica's and Verona's. Yeah. Um. So this is your day derivative well. of this. This is your day. Like that's as close as you're going to get. Well, yeah. You know? Um. I used to feel that way um, when I would hear Veronica, who she's one of the Stations of the Cross. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Yes. I would feel like like connected. Hey, I'm a little piece. Of, yeah, I yeah. feel the same thing with Doubt and Thomas. There's no Spencers oh, in the okay, Bible, but okay. my middle name is Thomas, Doubt and Thomas. Right. And, and I've, I've doubted some things before. So two things w- along the same lines. Quizzo. Everyone knows I'm Mr. Quizzo. I'm right. Mr. Last Place of Quizzo. Right. Did we last week even talk about me winning Quizzo? Um, I think thought we did but i don't know anything much. i don't think we did okay and it, 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 it's something worth talking about twice last week i went to quizzo like i do every week and i always get last place not second to last not third to last i get very last place right. whatever it's uh it's rigged last week i got first place number one mm-hmm. um they said you get a reward and i said uh, really? i didn't even know they gave out rewards because i'm so used to last place. yeah you were never there i won i got it and um my life has um. has never been the same with that said, I went back Wednesday of this week, um, and I got last place. Last. Last. With that being said, I got one of the questions right. It was a book round. Only one? No. Oh. One of the questions that I got. I don't, okay. One of. I, I'm not terrible at Quizzo. Mm-hmm. Everyone is just better than me. Okay. I, I get a lot of questions right, but uh, neither here nor there. Book round. It was the, the first line of books. I have to say what book it is. Okay. It's hard because I read a lot. Like, yeah. I, I, I've probably read 20 books this year. Okay. Which some people would say, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. Some people would say, that's really low. I think it's enough to say that I, I'm a reader. But same thing with music. If I, if I listen to alternative Other music. books besides Dr. Seuss? No, I'm serious. Oh, if I count it. You should count them. You, you thought those were the 20? Why are you all of a sudden putting him down? I thought we were supposed to tell the world that you can say I read a Dr. Seuss book. You can, but I mean... I think it's like watching a YouTube video and saying, I watch movies. Or I like, watch a documentary. You watch yeah, a short. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, it's like, it's sort of another one, just like music or movies, where it doesn't matter if you are a buff, a movie buff, a music buff, you need to be the specific classic buff. I, I've read Moby Dick. Yeah. You know, I, I've read whatever. One of the questions, it was, I got it right. A classic. Romeo and Juliet. Oh. By Shakespeare. Why? Because it starts out with, um, in years that have passed in fair Verona, oh. well, there was a story of two lovers. And I'm like, I know that name. I know that where that name comes up in a book. Great. Got it right. So thank you, Verona, Veronica's. Today's about you. I think there's a group, a girl group, Veronica's. The Veronica's? Yeah. I think it's just two girls whose name is Veronica. I could be wrong. Oh, they both have the same name? Yeah, I think, I think, I think. And then you have Betty and Veronica, of course. Yeah, and Betty and the Jets as well. <laughs> Betty? Benny. Why are we saying Benny at all? Oh, was, you said Betty and Veronica? Yes. Oh, I thought you said Benny. From from Riverdale. Yeah, yeah. from, uh, I don't know Riverdale. I know the Archie comics. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Freaky Friday? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so that's nice. Uh, happy, happy day, happy day. Uh, is everything else good with you? It's good. We have to tell them what we're doing. Yeah, I'll tell you what we're doing. Um, you know, we missed yesterday's podcast. No big yeah. deal. If you're a fan of ours, there's so much content that it's when when we miss, you're like, but we still feel fulfilled. It's yeah, because you miss, you go watch a video you haven't watched. We did miss the walk through Thursday. Today's Doctor Seuss Friday, or so, is it? Uh, no, one of um the co-hosts here out of the three of us left uh the Doctor <laughs> Seuss book in a car that is being manned or womaned by, by a, another person who is out of town. Um, yeah. Now the proof that we have is that I put a short oh. on YouTube today yeah. of me in Barnes and Noble buying the book. Oh, full of hope and promise. Do we, that it, do we get a little spoiler of what the book is? Bartholomew's hats or something oh, like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I, so there's the you can look at the short and wonder what it would be like to hear that book. But you know, they they say some things are uh, divine providence. Yeah. Some things are are meant to happen. We're on a path. Yeah. And yesterday, I, I worked two jobs. And I just ran out of time to do a walk through Thursday. That's fine. But little did I know, it's it was a cake in the oven that just wasn't ready yet. Right. It needed one more day. Right. So it's not we're not here saying we have a Wednesday, we have a Thursday, we've been missing a Friday. No. We have an open slot. And so what we're gonna give you today is the walk through Thursday from yesterday. It's walk through Friday. Don't we, get it twisted, it's walk through Friday. We never had that. Never had that. It's exciting. A little Bible learning study um, before you go out and and do your debauchery. So uh, without further ado, roll the intro, please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz Walk Through Wednesday just begun. What is up, guys? It is Walk Through Friday. Um, What we do on Walk Through Friday is we open up the Bible. Once the Bible is open, we, we sort through the books. The many books for those who don't know the the Bible is a a book composed of a bunch of smaller books. Yes. So we pick a bur- burk, <laughs> we pick a verse. I was saying Bible book club book and verse. We pick a verse out of that book. A verse. And uh, we put it on a pedestal for a day. It's uh we can talk about overarching themes. We can, but uh today is about looking at one verse and getting meaning from that. Yeah. That's what's so exciting about the Bible. You know uh. When they say you can't see the 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 tree through the forest, what can't see the forest for the trees. You can't see the far forest through the trees. Um, this is sort of the opposite. Mm-hmm. So it's like you have the forest that's like that is the Bible. Don't don't the get forest. Yeah. Where are the trees? And today we are we are given that that big one singular the big trees, oak. Where are the, where the trees? Where is the forest? Yeah, you're you're. It's like I, I made an analogy on our Wednesday podcast okay. about looking at a screen, and yeah, you know when you were to, if, if you see that podcast, look it up. You'll um you'll see my face is kind of like because when you kept saying screen, I kept thinking of uh digital screen, oh. and you're like looking through the screen, and I, and then all of a sudden I realized because like you just said, you're from the Archie Comics era. Yeah, I am. When you say screen. You're thinking of the metal mesh. Yeah, I'm not talking about one of these LED computers. <laughs> um, or let's just let's just use a glass, uh, a window. Mm-hmm. Um, you are, Windows able to you look through it and you see the big picture outside. But I mean, Windows are are amazing that we have Windows, and there's a lot of craftsmanship that goes into it. Every window is different. Yeah. So today we're bringing our eyes in and seeing the beauty in the glass. Okay. Beauty in the glass. That's what Walk Through Friday is. Um, so yeah, so today we're reading out of the book of a book we haven't read out of before. No. Um, if you look at the Bible books alphabetically, this will be the very last book. If you look what? at oh alphabetically, yeah, alphabetically. look at that. Okay, not, not look chron- at you. chronologically. I was like, wait. Chronologically, yeah. it's Revelation. Alphabetically, we have Zechariah, little Old Testament. We well, don't... we might have Zephaniah. Is that oh. a book and P? Z E C. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I think it's am I correct? No, I think you're right. Um, okay. <laughs> Thank you. The like, twins. The Z-twins. The, the amount of things that we don't fact check on this show. Oh, I know. And the one thing you get me on is, is Zephaniah. It starts with a Z and ends with an Echariah. And um, we're going to be reading Zechariah 14, 16 to 19. Yeah. So uh, the big one. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Only because they keep repeating... Um, something. Oh, I, cool. And I, I thought I, it needed to be repeated. And I like this. You know what? I'm, I'm happy we're doing it. 
Uh, just to jump ahead, this is sort of still talking about the Festival of the Tabernacles, right. um, the Jewish holiday that's going on all week. Right. Is Shabbat? No, it's Shabbat Shalom. It's today is Shabbat, right? Um, today's well, yeah. Friday, which is running into their um, so it's probably, Sukkot. It's Sukkot. Sukkot. So it's Sukkot Festival of the Tabernacles. Mm-hmm. So if we didn't get to do this one this week, right? Now, Dr. Seuss is the same. What, what, what has the quote that go? Dr. Seuss is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But maybe. I think I think that's a quote. Yeah, because Sukkot will end on Sunday and we won't be here. So, um, so yeah, so that's what this is about. Let's just get into it. <clears throat> then the survivors from all the nations that have attacked Jerusalem will go up year after year to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, and to celebrate the Festival of Tabernacles. If any of the peoples of the earth did, do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, they will have no rain. If the Egyptian people do not go up and take part, they will have no rain. The Lord will bring on them the plague he inflicts on the nations that do not go up to celebrate the festival of the tabernacles. Of tabernacles, This will be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not go up to celebrate the festival of tabernacles. <laughs> Moral of the story, go up and celebrate, celebrate the, the festival, festival of tabernacles. tabernacles. You would think. You would think. You would think. You would think. So that's why I chose it. It's 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 a dry one. Well, see, I, I'm I'm a little confused because mm-hmm. I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a Bible reader. Mm-hmm. I'm a biblical study, mm-hmm. and if I recall, um, maybe in in, in Luke, mm-hmm. Jesus himself said, "I'm not going to the festival of the tab- of tabernacles." You're, you're right. I think it was John. And, and John, he yeah. said, the, the, all the, all the disciples said, "We're going to the festival of tabernacles." Right. Jesus said, "I'm not going." Right. But it's weird because Zechariah said, you have to go. Right. And there'd be no rain. Right. Uh, there seems to be a little <laughs> contradiction here. Contradiction in the Bible? Oh, make it make sense. Make it make sense. Okay. So Zechariah, uh, this 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 piece here is talking about the, the festival of tabernacles, which you just mentioned. Uh, in, in Hebrew, you'd say Sukkot because they built Sukkahs. Which is just shelters. Yes, and um, they're celebrating coming through uh, the desert. Um, they're celebrating the harvest, and they're asking for rain. They're also um, they also remember we talked about uh, the clouds, yeah. the glory of God presented in a cloud, and um, so they hold this. This is Zechariah, and it's telling. Looks like it's telling you uh, that you better do it. If any of the peoples on the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the King and the Lord Almighty, they will have no rain. Right. And yeah, I remember back in these days, no rain is no crops yeah. is no life. Right. You will die. Right. So that's fine if we were to read it, if we were people living before Jesus, mm-hmm. you could read it like that. But we are not. We are we are people who are after Jesus. Post Jesus. Post Jesus. So even though that was written before Jesus, It is written in a way that will serve the people of the time, but it will also serve us. Yes. So um, what we look to as Christians um, is the feast or the, yeah, the feast, the festival feast of the transfiguration, which is in Luke. And the transfiguration is when Jesus goes up the mountain with three apostles. And when they're up there, he transfigures. Yeah. He becomes a glorious vision of, uh, of God. And um, he's visited by Moses and Elijah. And the apostles say to Jesus, "We should we build sukkahs? We're up on the mountain and we should build the shelters for these, for you, th- three of you. Jesus doesn't answer him, but a cloud appears just like it appeared in the desert for, for the um, people fleeing. Um, and, the, and God, God spoke and he didn't say anything about, um, the tavern, the, 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 um, sukkahs, but he said, this is my son. This is my chosen one. Listen to him. Okay. So that is what we refer to when we wonder about the, the, the feast of the tabernacles. Just to go back for one second. I hope I didn't make this confusing. No, oh, I'm not confused. Okay. Um, before Zechariah. So Zechariah is saying all that. You have to do it. You have to do it. You have Sounds to do like it. it. Okay. But before him was Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Okay. Jeremiah also gave us some clues that for the people in the future, 
are going to have different rules than the people from the past. Yeah. Because in Jeremiah, um, Jeremiah says, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. He has no worries of drought. Yeah. So you won't be worried about water. Um, and he also says the days of a new covenant. So that's the old covenant with Moses. The new covenant is coming. And why? Because the people broke the old covenant. Mm -hmm. So that's why there has to be a new covenant. But the days of Jeremiah, it wasn't Jesus' time yet. The days of um, Zechariah, it wasn't Jesus' time yet. In Luke and John, obviously, it is now Jesus' time. He appears. He is the new covenant. And that is what we we that is what we are now focused on we're not focused on hoping that he's going to come because he came yeah now we still hope as christians because we want the second coming yeah but but we acknowledge that he came he showed himself the the, the he showed heaven to these apostles the glory of god in a cloud everything that they had had in the desert and that they were hoping for and that the reason they were celebrating the tabernacles was fulfilled. Yeah. So now you have Jesus in John, the, in the, in the scripture of John, and Jesus is saying, no one's listening to him. He's saying, you're praying for rain. I am the living water of life yeah. that you will never be thirsty again. You're, you're praying for a harvest because it's also a harvest festival when you are the harvest, like you will reap, you, you didn't even have to plant I've done everything for you and that you just, you, I've sown and you get to reap. Yeah. And, um, what's the, oh, the law. So, um, Jeremiah foreshadows because he says that in the future with the new covenant covenant, the law will be written on our minds and our hearts, mm. not written on the tablets of Moses. Yeah. And then when Jesus, um, comes, he says, uh, the same thing about, um, the law of love. Yeah. So finally, and then I'll let you go. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus does go. He doesn't want to go. In um, yeah, John. He said, "I'm I'm not going to go," but he went. He he sneakily went to their feast of the tabernacles. On the last and great, this is um, this is John seven thirty seven thirty nine. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, "Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow within them." And it says in the same verse that these things are going to happen later because it ha it's going to be the Holy Spirit. Yeah, Spirit. Um, but it's just interesting because in John, here's Jesus who does go to to the festival and he is making these statements to the people who are celebrating it at yeah. that time when it was still appropriate. And um, he's, he's pretty mad too. And he tells them that their hopes are set on Moses. Yeah. Yet Moses wrote about Jesus. He said, he said, your, your hopes are set on Moses, but Rose, Moses wrote about me. Yeah. And so he's very disappointed. And um, he also which is interesting and you could talk about, he points out that no one at the festival keeps the law. He says that. And it's, it's interesting because they are keeping the law. They are at the Feast of Tabernacles, which they must do to get the rain, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so how much was he talking to the people present and how much was he talking to us? Because literally at that time, it wasn't his time to shine yet. Yeah. So... Maybe he was just mad that they had to do it twice. No, I, I think a lot of this goes to, like you said, like uh, what what is being said and what is is being meant. And so this seems all very intense of um, right. of you won't get any rain or something. But these people are people that are praying for rain and stuff. And right. we're not even praying, like desiring for rain. And it's sort of like, who is the one who gives you the rain? Right. God. And, and so this these festivals of, of the tabernacle, it's not so much of like, come and bow before me and I will then give you rain. It's come and, and give credit where credit is. Like right. point all the people who have attacked Jerusalem, attacked the place that I've set up. You come and, and focus your mind on the, on the right place. And I would compare it to like a church almost. Mm. Like a, a church is... The point of it is to go and to all be together to 
remember like uh, there's a reason why there's you know a crucifix in front of every church it's you're not supposed to be looking at the priest right no you, you are but the no priest, in the old days his back was to us the priest yeah. is a mouthpiece and then you were constantly looking at christ on the cross right and just like in church it happens now where it's like oh but they are keeping the law they're going to the they're go they're at they're at the church right. they're praying they're praying to god and it's there is a difference and it's an internal difference that only a God would be able to call out. Right. Where it's, you are forgetting what, like, you are forgetting that. Right. It's, it's easy to follow. These laws sound like laws that are being um, pushed on you. Right. right? There's self laws that we govern ourselves with. Mm-hmm. Having yourself go to, go to church every Sunday and going to church every Sunday as a way to to be looking towards God are two different things. And I think that's what Jesus saw the difference of. And on top of that, when Jesus was actually there, it was still this idea of, because it's just like you said, with the second coming of, it's as if Jesus comes back now and we're like, it's Easter Sunday. We have to go to church right? because we can't miss it. Right. And Jesus is like, are, are we kidding? Right. Are, are we kidding here? Like, I, I I am the person you're celebrating there. Right. And before Jesus, Festival of the Tabernacles, what is a tabernacle? That was like the Ark of the Covenant. It was, it was the... The house of God. It was the house of God, which housed the um, tablets of the commandments. Hoping he would dwell among us. Yeah. It was one, it was like he, he was, toy, he did tell us. But also it's like, that was the tangible thing. Right. Think of, of the Old Testament Bible. It, it was people spoke to god and 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 were presented in visions right and and, but nothing on earth was tangible besides the like those scrolls and and so it's they represented something that that god touched Mm -hmm. and so it was always like that was the holiness it was like this is something and so with jesus it it's the difference of an autograph from a celebrity and then the celebrities like, with you. Right. And then the, someone asked like, okay, but why does that discount the original? And I think the, this new, the new covenant and stuff is, it's not just now you met a celebrity and it's like, okay, but we're still want to like look at this autograph. It's that's your friend now. Right. That, that's your friend. And you're still caring about, right. Uh, about the things that are, you know, memorabilia from, from him. Right. And it's like, all of that was still important. All of, all of the songs this artist made is still important, but that's your friend. And it's like, why are you still like, you can just talk to me. Right. We, we, we can just be normal. Right. We don't, we don't, you, you're asking me to go to a concert that is my, is my music. It's, right. Just hang out with me. I, that's all I want. I want to, I want to be friends. And I, and I think that is sort of like. Yeah. It's like, they don't want to give up. You know, we, 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 society says like, it's not the, um. It's not the destination, it's the journey. Like people try to push that now a days and it might be applicable in certain circumstances, but I feel in this circumstance, they don't want to give up the, um, the journey. Yeah. They, they reached the destination. Yeah. We, we all reached the destination, but they don't want to give up this journey of, and is it empty? You know, literally this festival is said before the rainy season in Israel. So like chances are it's going to rain you know and so you feel you feel happy you feel fulfilled that look what we did look what we did yeah we did it correctly we built the the, the, we built the sukkah correctly yeah we prayed for rain and the rain came you know we had a good harvest and it's 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 more like um it's more like you know eating empty calories or whatever you know i'm saying like i'm hungry so i'll just eat this because it feels good at this time but it's like what are you really doing is it empty that what were we i thought we were all striving towards something and then we got there and then yeah um and another com- absolutely and another comparison i want to make because now i'm an expert on kids because okay. I'm, a, I'm a teacher yeah but i just have fallen in love with the child comparison because i think mm-hmm. like you uh how jesus talks about how kids are the most, most pure and stuff but also how you just we're compared to the you know, the children of God, right? Even as adults, and I think if you look at it as a lens through the heart, some will say harshness of the Old Testament, yeah, and the comfort of the New Testament. A lot of people will say, 
that was an angry God. That was, and, and I, I would say, no, I would say that is just the, the difference of you and I right now, as, as you, me, when I was four years old, it's did, your love never changed, right? Your love never changed for your child is presented two different ways. When that child is young and, and it's like you are having them grow to be, you might say things a little more matter of fact, like, right. Go to bed. You, you have to go to bed. It's because you know, like, and so with this of like, you won't get any rain. It's this out of love. Because why? They're Like you said, they're praying regardless. Right. And it's saying, okay, but you need to do things like, you, have, you, you how many times could say, why, why, why? God has all the answers. And it's like, if it was that back and forth, it would be because that's where the rain comes from. Right. Because you, like, you need to know. And then inversely, why Jesus was upset is you get to a certain age as a child with a good parent and... That parent never stops being a parent, never stops leading you. But there is a dynamic change. And the dynamic change is it, it, you still like, oh, so like, what's my bedtime today? Or can I go to the bathroom? It's, that's not us. Anyway. We can have, yeah. like, I will always be a parent. I'll always guide you. But it's not about like the festival. It's not about, right. it's not about these, um, we, we, have, we said the different type of rules. Yeah. The commandment um, rules. Ceremonial and, um, what was the other one? Moral? Yeah, that's it. The ceremonial rules are all those those childlike rules yes. of, of this is how you can be a fully functional adult. Those sort of, those don't mean as much because once you set the groundwork with the moral laws and, and the moral rules, you still have that, that structure, that foundation. But now you can be an uh, adult and you can still be thankful for the rain without right. going to the festival of the tabernacle. Right. You're still appreciative for the where things come from, right. even without doing the ceremonial process. Right. It's not. I mean, the idea stands. You still should be, even without a festival of the tabernacles, you should be looking and, and thanking God for all He does for you. But the festival of the tabernacles isn't as important once Jesus presented Himself and right. said, "I am the way." Right. Yeah, because they were. That that the story of the festival of the tabernacles is is to continuously remember coming through the desert, mm-hmm. um, but it's just I feel that I I don't <clears throat> it's don't be afraid to um, look with super open eyes you know when um, when the, the, the I was saying the feast of the transfiguration um, the apostles it says in there and I don't even have it but they um, they were sleepy but then they woke up. They completely woke up and that's when they saw um, Elijah and Moses and that's when they saw the pillar of, of God. Now, you, we would say they, didn't, they weren't actually sleeping is when you have your eyes opened. So to have your eyes opened about Sukkot is to want to still celebrate it, want to still – it's great for the economy – I'm serious. Like, you know, all the everything they sell, the things I told you about, the yellow lemon type yeah. things, they're, they're special fruit. They, they People pay like $200 for one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, they want to have the most beautiful one and everything. Yeah. And it's it's fine if you know what you're doing, that it's it's um it's a festival, it's communal, it's, you know, it's um a ritual. Yeah. You're coming together and you're remembering. But they're, they were very, we were very bad in the desert. To yeah. God. <laughs> so like, you know, to be honest, God's a lot of these messages were trying to get the kids under control. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. and so to, sh- so to show a maturity is to say, oh, right. Now these things are figurative and it doesn't really matter if it's a lemon or an yeah. a crot or, you know. So I just feel like if you if you just have like open eyes, I wouldn't I wouldn't even I, like I said, I want to do this. Occult. I think yeah. it's um it's great fun. But, uh, yeah, so the, the um, Zechariah was written for two different times, the time for there, and it can still be read today because they do repeat the tabernacles uh, a bunch, but they also repeat to worship the king, the Lord Almighty, um, in there. And that, of course, is the total goal. Yeah, and yeah, just to finish up, I guess, um, I always like to stress, you know, just the same way with a parent and, and a kid, Nothing changes, but it's just you relearn the importance. It's like you learn the why of things and right. then you don't need to do, you don't need to put the Cheerios in the toilet bowl anymore because right. you've learned how to not pee right. in the seat. Right, right. You can still put Cheerios in the toilet bowl, but right. you, you just have to know 
the Cheerios didn't do anything besides guide you. Right. And um, I, I think it's, it's definitely an important thing to remember that all of these things can be done. And Jesus didn't change anything from the Old Testament. He explained what the focus should be on. Doesn't change not doing anything. You can right. do everything from the Old Testament, but especially when you know what the focus is meant to be on. Well, his own mouth. He said, you... You're listening, you know, you honor Moses, but yeah. Moses told you I was coming. I'm here and, you know, yeah. I'm not. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's just, that's, that's definitely a thing that just happens. I mean, you see, yeah, I, I always bring up Billy Graham walking out of the car and putting the Bible up first because mm-hmm. he was worshiped, worshiped in a way. Right. And even by doing that, it didn't stop people from, right. they might have a Billy, a bigger Billy Graham photo on their wall, you know, back when he was like big, right. bigger than the Jesus. And, and, right. and it's like, that's not what it was about. It's like, um, I, I work at a school and it's like quite literally it's like I'm teaching if I'm like their parents teaching them things and then they're like my teacher taught me that and it's like I'm here to help you and then your parent comes and that's your that's your parent right like you know like you need to focus on on, on there are there will be teachers along the way Moses right. was a teacher but he was always a mouthpiece for something bigger right and he's always a mouth so you need to realize that your priest is in a position your your physical parent really is in a position mm-hmm. to help you grow, but none of these people are God. Right. And God's the person that this is all about. And and all yeah. of these things are earthly. We've said that before. Mm-hmm. They're earthly ways to get closer to God. Right. And Moses was an earthly person. He was a very spiritual, connected to God, spoke to God, earthly person. The festival of the tabernacles was earthly. It was a very spiritual festival. It was about some of the most spiritual things on earth. Right. An earthly way to get closer to God. Right. And all Jesus was saying was, remember, it's not a, like the earthly things are just vessels right. to get closer to God while on earth. And that's our show. Um, hope you liked it. It was Walk Through Friday. Uh, when will Dr. Seuss Day come? World we never have know. the book. We, well, somewhere. It's being driven. It's like Flat Stanley at this point. <laughs> We'll be back, uh, who knows when, maybe at the latest next Wednesday, maybe before then if you're lucky. Be good. Uh, happy Shabbat. Happy Sukkot. Happy, happy days. Peace.